I want us to have a shift in our perspective of having a perspective, a kingdom mind perspective. And a couple of things that we talked about last week, uh, just to summarize, it's uh, faith is seeing what God can do in spite of what I see. So uh, again, just seeing things in, in our life that, you know what, God is, uh, God is actually doing something with this. God is actually working something through this. Maybe I can't see it right now, but in spite of what I see, God is doing something good. God is doing a good work. And in that, you, you, you see fruit. You see, you see fruit in your life of things that are, that, you know, the, the, the people around you, people that are, you know, wanting to, are gravitating towards you because they see something different in you. They see something, uh, you, you know, unique about you that you have, and that's your relationship with Christ. And through that, you see fruits. You, th- you see fruits in your, in your kids. You see fruits in your relationships. You know, things that, that God is working, God is doing, that is allowing his kingdom to be, um, uh, you know, established here. And the fruit reveals God's promise. Sometimes you see things and you're like, well, why did that, you know, why did God teach me this, you know, back, back then? Well, then you, you realize that fruit was actually producing something right now, in this season right now. Sometimes it starts off as a seed, but it begins to grow and it begins to produce fruit. And uh, tonight we're going to be talking about Joseph. Last week we talked about uh, Joshua and, 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 and uh, you know, how, how he, he saw things from a different perspective when he saw, you know, when he was going to go take the promised land and he saw that the, there was an enemy there, and, but he knew that God was on his side. He knew that God promised him that they were going to have, you know, the, enter into the promised land. And so he, uh, he, he knew, he saw things from a different perspective, even though everyone else was like, nope. Let's go back to Egypt. Let's go back to, to where we came from. And now we have this story here uh, later on where we see with, um, uh, actually this was, this was all, all many years before, uh, the story of Joseph. And Joseph was a brother. Uh, uh, he had many brothers. He was the youngest at the time. And he had favor with his dad. His dad loved him so much that he, you know, he, he, he gave him, a, uh, he made a coat for him uh, with, with, with different colors and, and it was fancy and, and his brothers grew jealous of him. I don't know, have many of you guys seen like the musical of Joseph and the dream coat? So like, I, I never, I'm not very, a, a big fan of musicals, but Allison loves it. She always talks about it. She saw, she, she saw the live version of it and she always says that she wants to take me and I'm like, uh, I'll, I'm okay. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not into musicals, but uh, I, I heard it was good, so. Um, if you're if you're wondering, go look it up on YouTube. It's a little bit old school, but it's uh, it's one of those um, you know timeless things that you can watch and if you grew up in the church or not. Um, and anyways, Joseph he has this this coat, and his brothers grow jealous of him. And not only that, God reveals a dream to Joseph, two dreams, and he reveals a dream uh, to these two dreams to him, pretty much saying that his brothers would bow down to him, his brothers would serve him, that he was going to reach a certain position in society where he was going to be governing, um, uh, you know, a a nation, And, and at the time, he was only 17. At the time, he didn't really know, uh, anything other than what, you know, he was working for his dad, he was tending sheep, and, you know, his, his brothers grew jealous because God revealed this dream to him, but he was way off from actually living that out in, in, in reality at, at, at that time. So his brothers who are already jealous of him, all of a sudden Joseph is telling them that you, one day you guys are going to serve me, one day you guys are going to bow down to me. I'd be pretty ticked off too if my sister said, you know, said that to me. I have three sisters. I have two, two older, one younger. If one of the, you know, the younger one came up to me and said, oh, Danny, one day you're going to bow down to me. And I already know that, you know, my, my parents are, you know, she's, she's the favorite and, and, and they gave her a favor. And now all of a sudden I'm going to be one of her servants. Yeah, I'd, 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 I'd kind of be a little bit ticked off as well if, if it was like, uh, really? Like, I'm going to serve you? Probably not. But uh, that's what God revealed to Joseph. That's what God revealed to him in, in these dreams. You know, we're kind of moving on in the story for time's sake. Uh, his brothers end up selling him into slavery. At first, they were going to plot to kill him. They were just going to, you know, end, end, end with his life because they were that jealous of him. They were that envious of him that they were like, you know what? But actually, one of their bro- his brothers said, actually, why don't we make money off of him? Why don't we sell him? And then, you know, we, we can profit and get rid of him at the same time. It's like, a, you know, killing, uh, you know, a two birds with one stone. This is, this is perfect. We'll, we'll get something out of it. And, and so that was their plan. They sold him. And then all of a sudden, Joseph ends up being sold as a slave. And he ends up in Potiphar's house, who was, uh, uh, he, he, it was they were way up there in, in Egypt. And, and, and he, was, he was thrown into prison. You know, there, there was so many things, one thing after the other, that Joseph had to go through. And all of this time, like you have, to, you have to put yourself in Joseph's shoes for a minute. God reveals this master plan for his life. God reveals pretty much like this is what you were created for. 
And all this time, it's just one thing after the other with Joseph. One, uh, you, you know, bad <laughs> encounter with, you know, being, being thrown in prison. And then all of a sudden, this, the, 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 this woman wants to, you know, kind of take advantage of him. And he says no. And for doing the right thing, he gets thrown back into prison. And all, the, and all these things are go, going on with, with Joseph and his life. And all of a sudden, he's trying to remember, like, well, God showed me a dream where I was going to reach heights. But I'm not reaching those heights right now. I'm not in that, in that place that, that, that God has called me to be in. So what gives? God, what, what are you trying to show me here? What are, you trying, what are you trying to do to me here? Why allow me to go through all these things? Why, why don't you just put me, put me in that position that, that you showed me the first time? And, and it's really interesting. As I was reading this story, I, I kind of was doing some self-reflection, and I was looking back at some, some, some key moments in my life where it really helped shape who I am today. And I'm like, God, like, why did I have to go through that season where, like, it, it, couldn't have there been another way if you wanted to teach me this or if you wanted to teach me that? And sometimes, uh, you know, the more that I reflect, I'm like, man, it was, it was literally me that made myself get into these bad situations for making bad decisions. But in those key moments, God was still trying to teach me something. God was still trying to work in me. God was still with me. God was still helping me. He was still, he never left my side. And now when I look back, I'm like, oh, okay, that's why you had me there. That's why, that, that's why you use that experience for something so that I can glorify you today through it. See, Joseph was, he, he did everything right. He did everything right, but you have to understand that it, it was the people around him, the people around him that, 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 that moved him into these, into these, you know, scenarios where he ended up, you know, being sold into, into slavery. It wasn't his choice. He didn't make a bad decision. He was just sharing what God placed in his heart. And then he said no to Potiphar's wife. He, he made the right decision. He did the right thing, yet he was thrown in prison because of it, because she lied. And then all of a sudden, he, he finds himself in, in, in prison, and he begins to interpret dreams. And, and God, you know, one of the things that really was highlighted when I was, when I was studying this was in verse 39, and this is where we pick up the story. It says, in verse 39, chapter 2, it says, The Lord was with Joseph. And he was a successful man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house and all that he had, he put under his authority. It's interesting because um, you look at this, sto this, this story and if you look at all the events that took place in Joseph's life, you're like, Okay, wait, wait a minute. The Lord was with Joseph? Where was he when, when he was thrown in, you know, as a, as a slave? Where was he when he, you know, he was taken to prison? Where was he in all these, in all these moments that, that, you know, uh, you're like, God, why didn't you intervene? And as I was reading this, it, it, it's interesting because it never really talks about Joseph complaining. It never really talks about Joseph, you, you know, struggling with, with, with his faith in God. And one of the things that, you know, surprises me, it says, the Lord was with Joseph. And because Joseph was with the Lord, God showed him favor. So every place that Joseph ended up, because he was still tied to the one who, who revealed that promise, still tied to the one that he's still holding on to that dream, he was still trusting in God that he was trusting that there was a process, the Lord showed him favor. God gave him favor. And he rises up the ranks. He rises up to become, you know, as we fast forward, second in command in all of Egypt. And he's living out the dream. But I want to talk about being stuck when you're in the middle, when the situation looks hopeless. Because how many times have we, 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 we know where we need to be, but where we are right now doesn't look like it. Or we know that, you know, I, I got to become a better husband. I got to become a better wife. I got to become a better son or a better daughter. I got to be a better employer or, or employee. I got I, I, I to provide for my family. I got to do this and you got to do that. But what you see isn't actually what, where you want to be or isn't what you actually want to see. It looks different. When you look at your bank account, you're like, oh, well, that's not where I want to be. When you look at your kids, you're like, oh, my goodness, like, what have I done? That's not, where, that's, that's not who I'm trying to raise them to be. 
I know that my, my dad always said that to me sometimes. He's like, he's like when I was going through uh, high school and I was always getting into trouble, he's like, man, like, you were smart once. What happened? <laughs> That's not where you're supposed to be. You, you, you know, you should be, you know, on the honor roll or doing this. And I'm, I, I didn't see it that way. <laughs> I hung out a lot in, in, in uh, you know, this is honestly God just speaking to me right now. I hung out a lot in, in, in the room with the kids that were troubled and, uh, and some of the kids that needed, you know, extra attention. But actually, God was actually showing me something there because it actually gave me a, a heart for those who were rejected. It actually gave me a heart for, for, for those who, who, who were looked, looked over. Because there was a lot of people in, that, that I got to study with and things like that that no one would talk to. So then when I would go out for lunch and I would run into these people, I'd be able to show compassion to them, to the, to the same people that no one would ever even talk to or, or love. People who, who, who had different um, special uh, needs and things like that. And God gave me a, a heart for that. God gave me a heart for people. But I see Joseph in, 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 in these stories. And it's like, man, it seems hopeless. He was in there for years, but he still had the dream. He still had God's promise. See, what looked hopeless, God saw as opportunity. Because everywhere he went, there was an opportunity for Joseph to overcome and step out and, and, and grow in these, in these areas where you thought it was like, well, how, he was in prison. How did he become the official, you know? Well, he was a slave. How did he become, you know, all of a sudden working as second in command? You know, he, he, he did all these things that you're just like, wait a minute. How, how did that become an open door to being pretty much the, the vice president? <laughs> how, how did being in a prison cell and doing all the things right all of a sudden become an opportunity to grow, to become, you know, second in command in all of Egypt? Where he was just you know, interpreting dreams of people that were in his cell to all of a sudden interpreting dreams uh, of Pharaoh. How did that become? It looked like a hopeless situation, but God actually saw it as an opportunity. God sees it as an opportunity for you to begin to trust in him and know that he is with you and that he is for you. And if he is for you, who can come against? So that when you walk through those doors, you know it's an opportunity that, you know what, the situation might look, not might look clear. The situation might look uh, strange. The situation might look like it's hopeless. But, and know that in God, he sees it as a possibility. He sees it as an open door. He sees that if I just lean on him, I know that I have the strength to endure to get through it all, through these trials, through these pains. It says, while waiting in the midst of the trials, God was revealing something to Joseph of how to rely on, on God's strength and not his own. See, lean on God when it gets tough. Because when you're trying to, 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 to make it on your own strength, let me tell you, eventually you're going to break. And it's in those moments when you break that it's hard to pick yourself up. But luckily, we have a Savior who's already done that for us, who already allowed his body to be broken for us, who already allowed himself to go to the grave so that we wouldn't have to fall dead anymore. And now we are raised with him. Now we are resurrected with him. And now we have a life and we have victory. We look forward and it says, when you see a trial, like I said, God sees an opportunity. And lean on God when it feels like there's nothing else to lean on. It should be the only thing you lean on. It should be the only thing that you, that you go to. You know, taking out more credit in, you know, in your finances might not always be the solution. Actually leaning on God, God, how do I take, steward, uh, the money that you have already given me to come out of this debt, to come out of this rut? God, I need to lean more on you more than ever before. Sometimes it's trusting God when it uh, looks like a hopeless situation. But now all of a sudden you start seeing opportunities be birthed. I remember looking back at um, when I was... Uh, I was, <laughs> I've shared this with you guys before, I, I was always very, like, self-conscious of, of what my parents did for work growing up. Um, you know, like I said, my parents were, were immigrants when they came to Canada. They didn't know how to speak English. They didn't have the education. They didn't have, uh, you know, the opportunities that, that I have today. And my parents, they, uh, you know, my mom was, uh, was pretty much, a, she was a janitor. My dad, he was a painter. And he, uh, you know, he had his own company for a while. Things went, were going really well for him. And all of a sudden, it 
it, you know, everything folded, and, and you know, some, a couple people, uh, you know, kind of took advantage of him, and he lost his business. And, and so then he went back into, uh, you know, just being a, being a janitor. And so when my, you know, my, when my, uh, when my, fr- my friends, they would ask me, like, what my parents do for a living, you know, sometimes I, I struggled sharing just because, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I, I was just, I, I was kind of embarrassed. But I don't, looking back now, I'm like, I don't know why I was embarrassed because at the same time, like, everything that my parents were doing was giving me an opportunity. Everything that they were doing was giving me a, a, an opportunity to having a better life providing uh, an education for me, providing food for me so that I can grow and become, uh, you, know, you know, have more opportunities than what they had growing up. You know, they were fleeing a, a war-torn country. And I look back and, and, and see that the, these, these experiences of sometimes going with my parents to, to learn, uh, uh, you know, go, going with them to work sometimes at night and going to these different offices that my parents used to clean at night and, uh, and, you know, my parents would, you know, give me a, a broom and, or a garbage bag and, you know, tell me to go sweep or mop or whatever. And they were teaching me something. They were teaching me how to value hard work, how to value, you know, how, how, how to care for money because my parents weren't big spenders. They, they were really good with their money. They were teaching me valuable lessons that, that I applied now being 28 years old. And one of the f- interesting things was that, uh, Sometimes my, 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 my mom would tell me to go, uh, or sorry, when I would go with my dad, he'd tell me to go do, like, these dirty jobs that I didn't want to do. And I remember, uh, you know, I was always complaining and, and, and things like that, but, uh, you know, I would go and do them anyways. Later on, you know, when I was 18, 19, it was through my dad's company that I ended up getting this contract to clean this shopping center. And, uh, and I ended up cleaning this, the shopping center, waking up every day at 4 in the morning, going to this shopping center, cleaning toilets, scrubbing toilets. And I was like, what am I doing here? <laughs> like, I, I, you know, I, I was born here. I was raised here. I should be, you know, in university doing this, doing that, having a career. You know, I'm, I'm better than this and whatnot. And I don't know what, 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 I don't know what you're trying to teach me here, God. But looking back, I see the, the, the moments that God spoke to me so clear were in those days when I was alone, walking around, picking up litter, picking up garbage, just doing my, my job when no one would see me. It was those, I, those days that he, God would begin to birth messages and sermons in me, sermons that I'm now preaching to you guys today, sermons that, 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 that he, God just wanted alone time with me and teaching me something, teaching me something how to, how, how to go low and serve even when no one's even looking. And how to become a servant first and then, uh, you know, how, 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 to, how to follow and, and, and rise up to the places that he's, he's, he's allowed me to, to, to see and the things that he's allowed me to see. Because it's really easy looking at, at the dream and just getting there and jumping there right away in the spot. But in the in-between time when you're like Joseph and thrown in a prison and thrown in, in, in these situations that seem hopeless, but God is saying, no, I'm trying to teach you something. I, I want to show you something. I want to reveal how high I'm going to take you to, to, to these places. I, I want you to see how powerful I am. I want, to, I want you to see how, how, how strong I am. I want you to see how good I am and what I can do through you. And all of a sudden, I, was, I remember I, uh, I, it was because of that job that I was able to pay all through college without debt. It was because of this job that I was able to, 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 to learn. It sounds funny, but I, was, I, I knew how to learn how to clean toilets. And later on, I, uh, you know, when I was uh, in an internship, and, and this church wanted to, to hire me, uh, they didn't have any jobs for me. The only job that they had was as a custodian. And they're like, do you have experience in this? And I'm like, yeah, I have a lot of experience in this. I, I pre out my PhD in, in, in scrubbing toilets. Don't call me to your house to clean toilets. I, 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 I barely do it at home now because I have a beautiful wife who she enjoys cleaning the bathroom for whatever reason. God bless her. See, God gave me a gift because of that. He, he knew the work that I put in, so he gave me a wife that, that, that enjoys cleaning the toilets. Hallelujah. That's how we know we have a God. Man, I can finish that sermon right there, but I'll continue. All of a sudden, they're like, yeah, we have this job as a custodian. Do you want, you want to take it? I was like, sure. I loved it. And then, man, God began to, to speak to me, you know, when I was cleaning churches at Broadway. That's where I met um, Josh and, and his wife, Nicola, there. And I, was a, I started off as a custodian. And all of a sudden, you know, God started, you know, moving me up in, 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 in different places there. And, you know, I ended up becoming a, a, one of the youth pastors there. I, was, uh, I would go, and, and, and on Fridays, I would, I would get off school, and I would go to work. 
and I would work from 8 a.m. till 4 p.m. And then from, you know, I'd, I'd, have, I'd have a shower at the church. I would get dressed there. And then I would go in and run the youth ministry and, 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 and do help with the worship and all these things. And God was teaching me these amazing things. And I look back and I'm like, that didn't look like the dream. <laughs> you know, I, I remember a lot of times I was prophesied over three times the same prophecy of, you know, you're going you're gonna to preach to the nations. You're going to preach to the nations. You're gonna, you're, you know, God is going to take you here. God is going to take you there. And it looks great. You know, I'm not trying to, to, you know, toot my own horn or anything like that. But that's, that, that, that actually happened. Like, I had three different people. And, and I had always had that image of, like, what am I doing here? Well, I don't know about you guys, but uh, Fort McMurray almost seems like a very strange uh, nation in itself from Vancouver. Let me tell you that. And, uh, and the people that I've met here, I have, I've never met a Newfoundlander before. But when I come and meet Newfoundlanders here, it's like I'm in a whole other country. Let me tell you that. And I've grown to love and, 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 and you know, the, the Filipinos and the, and the Africans that come to our church to be able to, to, to share with them. That's, for me, is like, that's, that's preaching to the nations. Because I don't know what someone here is going to go and do for God in, in his kingdom. I don't know what, what someone's going to do, go do and take from here and, and, and hear a word and they're going to go, and they're going to go and share. I know that, you know, I, there's, there's individuals here in our group that have said, you know, I, I've, I've, I've uh, been able to, to, to help disciple and grow, and they even went to, you know, on missions trips and things like that already and, and shared the gospel. So when I see that, I see the overall picture. I see, like, yeah, that's, that's the picture. That's the dream that God showed me. But down here, I, I, it doesn't seem like that. But in God's eyes, it's, he sees it from a whole other level. He has an aerial view. He knows what's going on. And I see Joseph in, 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 in all these scenarios that he's, he's, he's in a prison. And there's prison walls around him. Yet God still saw <laughs> those prison walls broken. Because he, the whole time Joseph was in there, he was never meant to be in there. He was never meant to stay in there. See, when you see prison walls, God sees a ministry. Because in that time, Joseph had a ministry of interpreting dreams. Joseph had a ministry of, uh, of, 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 of uh, taking dreams and, and, and revealing God's truth. And that ministry led him to now ministering to, to Pharaoh and, and, and interpreting his dream. And because of that, that, that got him into the place where God had planned for him all along. One of the cool things is that when I look at the story of, of Jesus, Jesus had a, this whole plan. God had this whole plan of sending his son. But there was a moment where Jesus, he said, Lord, if this is your will, take this cup from me now. And It didn't look like the nice celebration that we see now and when we celebrate the resurrection. When you're in the middle and Jesus is in the middle of the process, and he was thrown in prison for a night. And then he was tortured and beaten and bruised. And all this time, it's like, well, that, that, that's, not, that's not how it's supposed to look like. You know, we, you know we, we have this wonderful story of, you know, Jesus resurrecting. But all, what about all the time that he was, he was literally in the, in, in the prison cell? But God was producing something. God knew the end of the story. See, I don't know what situation you may find yourself in. I don't know what you look back and, and you're like, God, it's, it's, this doesn't look right. Uh, this, this, this doesn't look like this was supposed to happen or, or this isn't how this was supposed to turn out. See, we don't know the end of the story, but God does. And one of the things that I find interesting is that when you're, when you're stuck, you can choose to, to have a perspective of, you know what, this, this doesn't make any sense. This is just, you know, this, this is just my bad luck. This is just, you know, uh, you know if I, if, if I would have had more money or if I would have had this or if I would have done that, it would be different. Actually, no, where you're in right now, there's a victory. It may not look like a victory. It may not look like what you had planned out, but it's there. Because the, the one who has the final say is God. The one who has the ultimate word is God. And when I look at my life, I'm like, man, 
I'm still here today. And I'm still standing. So it means that God is still producing something. God is still working something in my life. And I still have purpose and a plan here on earth. And so while I still have that, I choose to see things from that kingdom perspective. I'm just going to ask the team to come back up. Because I want to close off with this. We look at the situation and, like, like I said, what seems hopeless. God is working something behind the scenes. See, for three days, Jesus was in the tomb. It seemed hopeless. It seemed like the battle was lost. It seems like they had hit a dead end. But that was just the start of the greatest victory that you and I would ever experience because now we share in that victory. And God talks about now, you know, when you read, begin to read in the New Testament, Jesus start, starts talking about sharing in his victory. Sharing in, in, in his promise. Because the whole time, you have to, you have to realize that Jesus went, every, went through everything for you and I, so that we wouldn't be here today just saying, oh man, like, <laughs> this, this is hopeless. This, is, this doesn't make any sense. It may not make, make sense to you right now, but once you start seeing it through God's eyes, you start seeing that, oh, there was a victory in this. Oh, there is a promise in this. Oh, there is hope in this. Well, God is producing something in this. I can't see it right now. I can't see what God sees, but I'm choosing to look at and, and start reading the word and saying what the word says and start declaring that over my life. Because when I read the word, it says that I am victorious. It says that I am redeemed. It says that I am prosperous. It says that I have life and an abundance. You may feel dead right now inside sometimes when you're just like, man, like, I don't know where my, I'm at in my faith. I feel like I'm stuck. I feel like I've hit a dead end. But see, that's not where God has called us to be. He's called us to be the head and not the tail. He's called us to be more than conquerors. But when I look at my life, it doesn't seem like that. But it's your perspective that has to start, you have to start declaring that that's what you are because that's what he says you are. You may not feel it that way, but the, the more that you begin to declare it with your mouth and say, you know what, I, I have victory. I have hope. I have peace. I have comfort. I have strength. I know I can get through this. Greg just shared a little bit ago about, you know, his, his, one of his uh, supervisors, his boss that passed away. Man, that situation is, seems, seems hurting and broken. I look at my own life and it, I look at my, you know, my, my mom passing away, and it's like, yeah, that, that's broken and, and hurting. But when you know the end of the story, and when you know the final chapter, what seems hopeless actually is becomes joy, and actually becomes celebration, and something to look forward to. I have people who say to me, Danny, like, how did you do, how did you get through, through, you know, uh, you know, losing your mom at a young age and all these things? And I'm like, I, I honestly don't know. But those first three years, it, it was a total mess. But when I began leaning on Jesus, it all started making sense. And when I gave my life to Christ, it all started making sense. And what a situation that I saw as hopeless and hurt and brokenness and pain now I see it as joy and triumph and victory through what Jesus Christ did on the cross for me. Because now when I see that, I'm like, there will be a day that we will be together again. And I look forward to that day because I know now how the story ends, that Jesus Christ rose again on the third day, giving us all victory and eternal life for those who are in Christ Jesus. So then when I see that broken in pain, I, see, I don't see that anymore. I see life in abundance. Because I know that there will be a day that we'll be together again. And that's what keeps me going. That's what keeps me moving. And that's what keeps me doing what I do. Because I see souls that don't know Jesus yet. 
souls that if we don't begin to, 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 to go out and to begin to, to love on and show them the love of Christ and lead them to Christ, they won't get to share in that victory that you and I have. But see, the difference is that I know the end of the story now. I know how it finishes. I know how the story ends. Jesus already won. Jesus already overcame. Jesus already took the pain and the shame and the guilt and the condemnation away so that I don't have to bear it anymore. So instead of seeing things from my own perspective or seeing things from a worldly perspective, I choose to see things from a godly perspective. And when, he, when I start seeing things from a godly perspective, it gives me hope, it gives me life, it gives me peace, it gives me comfort, it gives me strength. Because I don't got to lean on my own understanding anymore. I lean on God. And because I lean on God, I know that I'm going to make it through. Because this is the same God that parts the seas. This is the same God that can tell in one moment change a person's life. This is a God that can raise someone from the dead. And if he doesn't, so be it. I know how the story ends. I know where I'm going. I know what happens to those who are in Christ Jesus. So it's not hopeless. It's not the end of the story yet. Because God is still writing my story for me. And if he's writing it for me, then I know I can just sit back and trust the process. Trust what he's doing, that he's doing something good. When we stand to our feet, just to close off, we sang this song. I love the, the lyrics to it. Greg just introduced it to, to us. And this, and this is how I know that the Spirit is, is here because I don't always look at the, the song list and stuff, but it's so fitting that he is my shepherd. He doesn't leave me. I'm not alone. Even though it may feel like I am sometimes here in the natural, God is with you. I had this crazy thought as I was preparing this message and, and uh, coming up to, to, to share it just a few moments ago I had this thought where I was like man Jesus was in the tomb for, for, for three days and it says that he was, he was all alone even for a few moments on the cross he was, he was all alone and he must have felt that loneliness because he was fully God but also fully human and he must have felt that loneliness in that moment. And I believe that the reason that he said that it was better that I leave so that the spirit, the comforter would come was that now you and I will never feel that loneliness because God is always with you. Because he must have felt what it was like in the tomb. That he said, I don't want that for anyone, so I'm giving them my spirit. I don't want anybody to walk this this journey alone because I want them to know my spirit. I want them to walk with my spirit every single day. So I'm not alone. I see it now. I see that he is here now. I see all through throughout my life that he was there. Every broken situation, every hopeless situation, what seemed hopeless, he was there. And he was working something out. And I would, you know, years later and time has gone by and I know that even when we face hardship even right now in this in this season in life I know even in the future God's going to use it for something greater and I say God use me use me I just want to do a quick prayer tonight with every head bowed and eyes closed just for the privacy of those around you I just want to pray for anyone here who was saying, Danny, like I've, I've always been so negative in. I've always been complaining. In. You know, my life was this because of this or because of that person or because of what they did to me or things that we haven't been able to let go or 
or overcome. Things that we wish we never have gone through. I want to pray that that would just be released and those prison walls just be broken and that we begin to see that actually God was producing something. And even if you can't see it right now, I pray that he will begin to reveal it in your life. If you're like, God, Danny, I, I need to change my perspective to a kingdom perspective, I just want you to quickly lift up your hand and put it back down. I need my perspective. I need to shift. I, I, I need to shift in, in my thinking. I need to shift in the way that I've been living. I, I, I need to shift from my, my, my own negative thoughts, my own negative insecurities. I, I need to shift now to seeing things through God's eyes, through his lens, how he sees me. If that's you, just quickly put up your head and put it back down. Praise the Lord. There's hands all over the room that went up. God, you see these hands, you, but more importantly, you see their hearts, you see their spirits, God. Lord, I pray right now that you begin just to, 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 to give them the peace and the comfort, Lord, that they need, but also the strength that they need, God, in, in whatever it is that they're going through or whatever it is that they've gone through already, God. I pray that you just begin to reveal your plan and your promises to them, God, like never before. God, things that didn't make sense, experiences that they lived through, God, that, that, that brought, might have brought pain and brokenness. God, I pray right now for healing. I pray right now for just a release, God, from whatever it is that is holding them back, from changing, God, to having a positive, kingdom-minded perspective, Lord, in their spirits, in their souls, Lord, in their lives, God, that any spirit of negativity just be removed in the mighty name of Jesus any condemnation, God. Maybe it was something that we did, God, uh, something, a mistake that we might have made. A bad decision one night, God, doesn't define how you see me. There's someone here today that needs to hear that word. Uh, one bad decision that you might have made back a long time ago doesn't define where God wants to take you and where he is going to take you. I want to tell you right now, you've been released from that. You've been saved from that. You have been forgiven already for that. So let it go. You are a new creation. One night cannot defy your future when your future is decided by the one who already says that you are victorious, that you are redeemed, and you are more than a conqueror. So if that's you, that you need to hear that word, receive it now.